Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Subbing. And this week, we are going to be giving you some tips on how to hitch. Safely and quickly. Yes. You know, we do it through the checklist and we've been hearing a lot of people are buying new RVs. These tips will be good for both the newbie and, and the pro alike because exactly. we've, we've been doing this for 18 years now. And we've learned a few things. We have, and we want to pass those things on to you. And that's what this week's episode is going to be about. Should be fun. So the first tip we're going to give you is actually step five under my hitching checklist. And that is to insert the hitch pin and the safety wire. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna put the hitch pin in. You can see I prefer the locking one. There's two points here to remember. First of all, I always ensure that the lock is down so that there's no chance that it could come up. And then I insert a safety wire, which is just a small wire, which will right in through here. We'll give it a little twist. That makes double sure that it won't come loose. Yes, and that's exactly what that does. That'll make sure that there's no way that that mechanism like if is you, even feed if a rock through, hits it or something right and come out. So that's uh, how I put my hitch pin in. Let's go ahead and move to the next tip. So as soon as the hitch is installed into the receiver, the most one of the most important things we're going to do is we're going to check the condition of the hitch underneath the truck. So I've got my knee pad, I've got my flashlight. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on and I'm going to check underneath looking for any cracks, any welds that might be broken, anything that doesn't look normal. This type of thing can happen. We've seen it happen with three of our friends at least. And you can see from these pictures here, uh, one of our friends was kind enough to send it to us. And you can see how this can happen. And even though ours is a 2018 truck, we're still checking it out anyway. Just it might ne you never know when there might be a crack or some type of failure. The next step we're going to do is we're going to raise. The, this depends upon your hitch too. With my equalizer four point sway control hitch, I have to raise the assembly up anyway. However, with my old Reese hitch, I didn't need to do that. So I did this step independently, and that's to raise the jack with the ball onto the receiver to check to make sure that this coupling has actually been made effectively. And you do so visually, and we're gonna go ahead and do that and check it out right now. The key is to get up close and personal and wait for that moment when the top of the receiver comes off the ball and the catch catches. There it is. And then it's gonna raise the entire assembly up and you'll be sure that you've got a good connection. There's two very important and distinct safety systems should the worst happen with your hitch. And it's very important to understand why they're designed so that you can get it right. And the first one we're gonna talk about are the safety chains. Safety chains, the primary function of this is to keep the trailer attached to the truck should the hitch receiver come off the ball. Okay, so that's the primary reason for this. So to do so, you always install You always install them crossways. You always install them in an X, okay, so that they cross in the center. And the purpose of that is that so should the receiver come off the ball, the whole assembly is going to fall and this is going to act like a cradle. Hopefully. I've never, that's the theory, I've never done it, <laughs> nor am I going to do so to demonstrate for this video. But yeah, if this were to come off, also it might also help a little bit should there be some hitch damage. But the primary function of the safety chains is to keep the trailer attached to the truck should the receiver come off the ball. The next primary safety system if, when th to help you when things go really bad is your breakaway switch. Now the design intent of the breakaway switch is to apply the trailer's brakes should the entire assembly depart from the vehicle. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important to look under your trailer, as we previously talked about, to make sure that doesn't happen. But if it does, your breakaway switch is going to work. And to do so, it's going to be in a couple different things. First of all, it has to be parallel to the direction of travel. I've seen some cattywampus um, at a crooked angle. It has to be directly parallel because what you're going to want is for this pin to pull out. Exactly. 
when really bad things happen. Now, I've seen this discussed a number of times on the forums and stuff, where people will take their breakaway switch and say attach it to their chain. That makes no sense. It makes zero sense because remember, you're trying to stop the trailer if all of this comes off. So if it all comes off, that's not gonna stop the trailer. And the trailer's gonna go right down the road. So you've got to attach this to a point that's entirely separate, separate from the hitch. Okay, my old truck, my old F-150 had a kind of a hole in the bumper here and I did it through the bumper. On this 150, I have a eye bolt, as you can see here, and it's bolt through bolted on the other side. So it's got a bolt on the other side. So I'll take my safe, my breakaway switch, feed it through there, and then it, the other end goes on the other side of the hitch receiver pin. So that's ready to function. Looks pretty safe. Yep. So one thing to note, you know, I've never practiced it actually, but should the trailer fall onto the chains, I'm not sure if my breakaway switch would actually detach, probably not. Therefore the brakes on the trailer wouldn't activate. That's why it's very important to go ahead and make sure that you practice using your brake controller and especially having your co-pilot practice using the brake controller because you might be fighting like crazy because this thing's going to be doing all kinds of cattywampus maneuvers. All right, brake, 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 brake. That was exciting. You think you could do that if you had to in an emergency if I start yelling brake, brake, brake? I think so. All right, that's good. While we're talking about the breakaway switch, let's talk about some of the maintenance that should be done on the breakaway switch itself. According to my manual, you're supposed to once per year pull the switch out and apply a light coating of oil to the switch. This also gives you a chance to check the switch out, make sure that it does detach, that it's in good condition and it's not broken or um, else why. But before you do that, you gotta make sure you disconnect your battery because if you don't disconnect your battery and you pull that breakaway switch, you're gonna energize your magnets and you're gonna overheat them and cause problems for your brakes. So make sure you always, always, unhook your battery before working on your breakaway switch and just as an aside your breakaway switch should never be used as a parking brake um, for that same reason of overheating the brakes I think the only thing I would use this for would be if for somehow I messed up gravity overtook my wheel chocks and I'm unhitching and the RV takes off backwards or takes off forwards I would probably give this thing a yank uh, as my vehicle begins to depart the place where I wanted it to be just as an emergency But as always these things should only be done in an emergency. Let's go ahead and disconnect this battery Let's go ahead and pull this pin now that the battery is disconnected All right, we've, all right, as you can see, we've pulled the pin. That's what that little guy looks like. I'm gonna inspect the pin, make sure it looks good. There's also a O-ring right there, which I'm gonna inspect to make sure that no water is getting into this. I'm then gonna take a small bit of three-in-one multi-purpose oil, put that on. Rub that around. Once per year I do this. Actually this year twice because I'm doing it for the video. And then I'm gonna reinstall the pin. And it does go in only one way. The pin's reinstalled. We've done our maintenance, we'll move on to the next thing. And so you might be saying, well, I'm not gonna do that maintenance because I'm afraid of breaking the pin, say, and being without a pin. Well, not gonna catch me. That's why in my spare parts bin, I have a spare breakaway switch. The other reason I have this is because I've heard stories of unscrupulous people 
playing a joke on people and coming by and yanking the breakaway switch right out and then walking off with it. They do that. I've got spare pins, spare cords, spare wires, everything else that's needed just in case some joker tries to mess me up. Not going to happen. All right, the next tip we're going to give you is regarding hooking up your pigtail. And of course, like we showed you, we store it hanging down and that's so that any water that could run down during the rain uh, won't get into the electrical connections. We would never store it, say, like, like this or something. Um, you can see here, this is the little catch that's going to catch onto your door for your truck's connection. And that's what's going to keep it from pulling out. But of course, I take it a step further with a Velcro strap. And we're going to show that to you close up here. All right, we're going to go ahead and connect the pigtail. So for whatever reason, this is kind of a weird thing, I think. Ford, ha the door opens down. My last Ford, it opened up, which that to me made more sense because it acted as a rain guard, but whatever. So this goes in this way. Plug that puppy in. Make sure your door engages its catch. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my Velcro. I'm going to wrap it around the door and the pigtail. Just to make sure it doesn't come loose. To make sure it doesn't come loose. And then, of course, this section of the pigtail I will hook in. Make sure we've got a good connection. Yep, that looks good. Then we're good to go. Well, there you have it. A few tips on how to safely yep. and correctly hitch up your RV travel trailer. Exactly. If you like this video, click to subscribe. Give us a big thumbs up. It helps our channel. And comment below if you have some interesting ideas on how to hitch up. Right, because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos every Tuesday. We'd love to hear what you have to say. And we might learn something too. Yeah. Thanks for watching.